Hi everybody, hope you're all doing well today. In this video, I'm going to show you two things that you can do with a double backer. Most decks of cards these days come with a double backed card, so here's a couple things that you can do. Number one is you can have already showed your spectators a few tricks, or you can just do this to begin with, it doesn't matter. Uh, when you take the deck out of the box, leave the double backed card in the box, just like that, and leave it off to the side. You're going to ask your spectator to name any card that they want. Let's go with the, I don't know, let's go with the King of Clubs, okay? King of Clubs, you're going to look through and you're going to act like you don't see the king. In reality, you're going to find it. Don't hold the deck like this where they can see it. Hold it like this where only you can see the faces. So you're going to find that king. You know where it is, about in the middle of the deck. You're going to look through, act like you don't see it. Tell them you don't see it. You're going to go through again. And this time, you're saying, I'm going through even slower. You find that king, hold a break at it, and say, wow. You can use whatever pattern you want to use. Say, wow, I, I don't see that king anywhere. Is there a reason that you named that card? Or did you just, you, it just came to your mind? Is it a favorite card or what? What I did there is control the king to the top. Your spectators are never going to see this. You may have seen it on camera just then. That last time you go through and you find the King of Clubs, you're keeping that little hold on it right there. As you go through and act like you don't see it, what you do is you're just breaking the cards right at the King, and you're letting this half of the cards fall into your hand, and then right where that King is, that next half is going to fall right on top of that half. And what you've done there is controlled the King to the top. Now you can use whatever control you want to use to get it to the top. You can pass it, or you can do whatever you want. That's just what I use. It's the easiest, and most casual to me to use to get the card to the top. Now, at this point, you draw attention to the box, and you. what I say is I'm like, okay, well, wouldn't it be weird is when I was taking the deck out, I think I accidentally left one card in the box. Uh, wouldn't it be weird if, and you shake it at this point, wouldn't it be weird if the card in the box is, and you said, what, the king of clubs? Wouldn't it be weird if this was the king of clubs, and you open it up, and you're like, you can see one card in there, right? And they're like, yeah. You grab it, and you ask them to repeat their card. They see King of Clubs, and you're like, King of Clubs, huh? And you turn over that double and show them that it was their selected card. So what I did there, again, I took the double backer out of the box. Their card was on top. I put the double backer on top, turned it over, revealed their card, set it down. And now this is the double back. So that's a cool little prediction slash reveal trick that you can do to your spectators. Definitely give this one a try. It gets great reactions. Here's one more thing you can do with a double backer. You won't need your box for this one, but the same concept applies here. So you got to show the spectator a trick and you're going to lay your double backer to the side. Don't draw any attention to it. Just leave it laying off to the side and go ahead with the performance. Like I said, same concept applies. Ask them to name any card that they want. Let's say they go with the Four of Hearts, all right? So you're going to go through acting like you're looking for the Four of Hearts. Act like you cannot find it. In reality, you do find it. It's right there. And say, maybe I missed it. I'll go through one more time a little bit slower. So you go through slower, acting like you still can't find it. Again, you come to it, hold the break at the Four, split the cards, and control that card to the top. What that should look like in real time is you're going through, you can't find it, go through again even slower, and then you hold your break, and it's just a quick little turnover just like that, okay? One more time. Can't find it, and it's just like, okay. Well, wouldn't it be crazy if this card that's been sitting here the entire time, actually, I haven't even touched it, it's been right here in full view, wouldn't it be crazy if that one card is the card that you named. You could ask them whatever you want. Is there a reason you named that card? Has it got some meaning to you? Whatever you want to do. Uh, but you, you have them go for the card. You say, if you could, just turn it over. And then you stop them. They go to turn. You're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Actually, you're not going to be able to turn the card over. And they're going to be like, what, what do you mean? I'm like, go ahead and do it. But I'm telling you, you're not going to be able to turn this card over. They go again. And... Once they turn it over, they're going to see that it's a double backed card. And at this point, guys, you may not think it's going to get good reactions, but trust me, it gets great reactions. They turn it over, see a double backer, they're all freaking out. They're like, what is this? Because normally a layperson would not 
have ever seen a double backed card. This is alien technology to a lay person, okay? So they're looking at this and you're like, I told you you wouldn't be able to turn it over. And at this point they've handed it back and you're like, I told you you wouldn't be able to turn it over, but maybe, maybe you can. And you direct your attention to another spectator. Before you do that, you're gonna be like, yeah, I told you you wouldn't be able to turn it over. Do a quick top change and lay it down and be like, but maybe, maybe you can turn it over. And then they'll go for it and they'll turn it over to see that it was the selected four of hearts. And you can go back to the first guy and be like, yeah, you wouldn't be able to turn it over. I told you that, but you were able to. I told you you could do it. And at this point, they still may be talking between each other. You've picked up the four of hearts again. You're talking back and forth. And guys, I'm telling you, your patter and the way that you talk to your audience is going to play a big factor in how well these tricks work. That top change is nothing. Okay, you can pull that off. You do it again if you want to, and you can leave the double backer setting on the table. So the other spectator turns over the four of hearts, and at this point, uh, they may be joking back and forth with each other, or you can butt in and be like, yeah, I told you, you could turn it over. And while you're talking, do one more top change if you want to, and uh, lay it back down and be like, I told you, you could turn it over, but you, you can, you can never turn over that card. And say, go ahead and try it again if you want. And he thinks it's the four of hearts. He turns it over to see the double backer yet again. Now guys, I wouldn't suggest doing this more than once or twice. Sometimes I'll do it twice if I feel I can pull it off with that particular spectator. Normally I just do it once to where it changes to the four of hearts and I leave it at that. I, I normally will not change it back to the double backer, but you can do whatever you like to do. Anyways guys, that is two things that you can do with your double backed card. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like the video, comment down below, and hit subscribe. It's greatly appreciated. Also, if you want to, go ahead and go enter my giveaway if you haven't already. I'll leave a link in the description box below. But until the next video, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day or night whenever you're watching this video. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.